In a series of videos that I'm going to do, um, this we're going to max ECU convert Ashley's Series 1 Escort RS Turbo that he's had for a very good many years. There's a few interesting points with this car. Um, Ashley has had it hanging around for, for a little while, probably circa 10 years. Um, originally, this car has had the K Jetronic system removed. Um, and it has been started to convert to the Sierra Cosworth management, the Morelli. So we are, we now skip forward a few years, that was never completed, it's on a ZVH engine. Um, so we've come along and sort of decided that the best thing to do would be to put this on a max ECU. We've decided on the Sport to leave a bit of headway in the future. Um, we are going to try and utilize some of the sensors that are already fitted to the vehicle mainly being sierra cosworth sensors both of the pickups have been converted it's got a distributor um, and it's got the sierra cosworth throttle body already fitted and and hopefully we're going to use those um, normally with an efi conversion on a cvh as some of you may know back in the the good old days circa sort of uh, late 90s early 2000s um, one of the things that I did was convert lots of these over to um, EFI management. I used to have a website called rsbible.co.uk and um, lots of my bits and pieces were shared around still even today I see them occasionally but but anyway we're gonna we're gonna do um, we're gonna put max ECU on it we're gonna move forward with the times um, use a modern ECU um, and have all of the protection stuff that I like um, oil pressure oil temperature lean um, all of these all of these things that we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna incorporate into the software of the ECU when we come to tune it but initially as I say we're going to use as much of what's there as we can um, that's already been fitted um, and then we're going to wire that in um, we're going to put the ECU we're not going to put the, originally the ECUs would be up here this presently has two looms in it two engine looms in it engine bay looms so we're going to rip the lot out, we're going to rip the fuse box out, do it properly, pull it all through. I hate it when people add in looms into these things and, and I think the car deserves to have some um, a bit of care and attention taken to it. We'll be using um, the original loom wrap which is like a like a PVC tape, um, like a um, adhesiveless tape um, just to try and make it look factory. All of the loom will come into the fuse box area here. Um, and then we'll put the ECU, we'll mount the ECU probably on the bulkhead behind the dashboard somewhere so that it is. So that it still looks sweet, still looks tidy, um, and yet is modern. So this is a very tidy car. Um, we think that it was, you know, it's, it's been refurbished. Um, before Ashley bought it and he's essentially been slowly getting on the road and this is kind of the final piece of the puzzle. As we say, so it's already on a ZVH, um, we've got a hybrid turbo and we've got lots of interesting bits and pieces here. Some escort levers will notice the, the airbox and a few other little bits and pieces going on. But, but yeah, ultimately we're gonna lose quite a lot of this wiring. Um, and what we might do actually is, is um, leave like the crank sensor wiring long enough um, in a position so that if ever Ashley's got to take the gearbox out, because we don't want to just change a flywheel now, which is the usual uh, the, the usual way to get a flywheel sensor on one of these. It's got the Cosworth one fitted on this end, on this pulley. So if he's going to pull the gearbox off in the future to change the clutch, because this is every age, he's already got the hole into looking at the back of the flywheel, so he'll be able to utilise then that flywheel and we can just change it in the settings. Um, the same probably with the coil. Um, Ashley's already had the distributor modified a few years ago to fit in the side of the CVH head and it works. So we'll utilise that for a minute, but we will leave a connector on there so he can go to distributorless, distributorless ignition at some point in the future, should he require to do so. Um, just leave that bit of future-proofness there. We'll put like a couple of DTM connectors hidden away as well so that he can put some additions on, should he require. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to get some, um, some very low-tack tape because I'm going to build this loom in the engine bay as I go. Um, purely to just try and make it look as factory as I can. I don't want to just make a generic loom and then just sort of throw it in and zip tie it in. We want to try and fit it in around where the original loom would go. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put some tap, very low tack tape all along the tops of the wing tops, along the front panel here, um, just so that when I'm pulling a wire across, I don't happen to grab it because the paint's lovely on the car. Um, obviously, I've got like wing protectors and all of those things, but. It's just the added layer. Very often I'm pulling a wire across and it might just, just nick it. So we'll do that and protect the thing as much as we possibly can. Um, and then we'll start pulling some of the old wiring out and uh, see where we get. So 
hopefully you'll join me um, along the way. I don't know how many videos this will be, but it's going to be more than one, I tell you that. So let's get going, get some tape on this and protect this car. Okay, nice simple protection for the paint and over these parts where we're likely to be pulling cables and we don't want any abrasion marks in there so um, this will all just come off very easy it's a low tack it's designed for fresh paint to be fair and this paint's been on 10 years and feels very hard but it just stops any cables pulling around so up and down so just pulling things apart now and it's it's quite nice to see that we have got some of the efi um the e ideal efi parts already so um We've got a Fiesta RS Turbo or potentially a XR3i inlet manifold. Um, it's been modified already, it's had the idle valve removed. Um, the Cosworth throttle body actually does have an idle valve so we'll be using that. We've got some Cosworth greens here which we're going to remove um, and we'll put some um, some nice saturated, saturated injectors in there which we can drive with the ECU no problem. Um, other than that, yeah, but there's just lots going on, we're going to lose it all. Um, and just make this so much tidier and so much more reliable. So the Sierra part of the loom has uh, had a hole bored in the bulkhead. Um, so we're just going to pull that out now. Um, but we'll try and find some nice bung or another grommet to go in there that's going to be the same size to try and tidy that up. Bit of a shame really, but I guess that's how it all was in the 90s. Um, as you can imagine, the other side of this was uh, installed in the same fashion as they were in the 90s as well, which is uh, not great, but um, not the worst I've seen to be fair, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll work through it. Right, yeah, that's the Sierra subsystem out of the way. All we're left with now is the K Jetronic, the, the MFI loom, which is integral to the, the whole Escort loom. Um, historically, um, one of the best ways of dealing with this, with the, certainly with the Series 2, would have been the, um, the XR3 EFI loom, um, which mounts the ECU just in front of the, the gear selector, just, just under the dash there. So. Um, the other S ones we've done in the past, um, we strip right the loom right back to the fuse box, which is what we're going to do with this one, just to try and make it look nice. You can actually see now that it's wrapped with um, insulation tape, which isn't the correct material and um, period correct for this. It's got various bits and pieces cut in, um, messed about with anyway. Um, we'll put two speed, it's got two fans mounted in the front, so we'll put them both on separate temperatures so that it comes in in multi stages. We'll put a, a little relay box in the back there, uh, sorry, out of mind, integral to the loom. Um, the other thing, this is would have originally had the BC gearbox. It's got the IB5. It's had a conversion um, with the with the engine, I guess, at the same time, um, and the starter motor has been relocated to the rear. So it's another good positive thing to rewire it because the wiring is just incorrect anyway. So um, I'm really happy we have made this decision. I found some other little bits and pieces along the way. Some of the um, current returns are ju they've just had their day. Funnily enough, it's a like a 40 year old car I guess now sadly um, anyway so right let's um we'll start pulling back the escort stuff now and see what we've got going on so the more I the more I cut back the more I can find the original um, loom tape under here there's sometimes five six layers here so extra relay here as well we need to get rid of so um, yeah it's a bit of a bit of a rat's nest but to be fair, um, the worst things are often the, the nicer they look when they're done. So, uh, 
Yeah, slow progress. Okay, that's all of our wiring now out of the vehicle that was anything to do with the cage electronic system. Um, I've left the original loom, so all of the lights, the, the fans, uh, all of those other bits and pieces that are car relevant, the, ho the hooter, um, is all still now in the loom. I've, I've gone along and just taped it just for now, just so that it all stays in you know, where it should be and stays in line. So in order to get the wiring from the bottom, we did have to remove the uh, turbocharger, the manifold, the downpipe, the intercooler and the radiator and a few other bits and pieces, which is a bit of a bugger, but that's how it goes. Um, so yeah, we're now at a point where uh, everything is now stripped back. All of the removal of everything that we need to remove is out. So we can actually start building a proper loom up now uh, putting everything in where it should go and actually sheathing the wiring in a sensible manner. We have come across quite a few little naughties that have happened over the years of the car, but then, you know, she's been around for a little while, bless her up. Uh, so, so yeah, naturally, sort of back in the day, uh, things were often just sort of thrown in and fudged in, uh, sadly. So, you know, we found a few little naughties that which we can sort of get rid of on the way through. Uh, I'll just try and make it nicely. Sorry, Uncle Spike. From the noughties. From the noughties. So noughties from the noughties, no doubt. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, we, we've now got like a, a blank canvas. We can start firing in some proper wires now. Uh, get the Max ECU mounted up. It's going to be my first, my first little job. Get that mounted in up under behind the dash somewhere. Um, the fuse box is actually loose, so I can pull that out. Get all the wiring back up through in the original location and make it hopefully look all pucker. So um, that's it for this first episode. Uh, in our next episode, as I say, we'll be actually throwing some wires in it. Um, I don't know how many episodes this will be, probably two or three, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so yeah, thanks for following. Uh, see you all next time. Uh, please like and subscribe and all that thing. Say bye, Uncle Spike. Bye. <laughs>